What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma if you're new here and I love to talk about all things Peloton cycling and fitness. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post every single Sunday and today's video I'm very excited about. I'm excited because I haven't filmed something like this before but basically I'm going to be reviewing the new Lululemon Bliss Feel shoes that I just got yesterday in the mail. Here they are and I think that I'm at least going to take a couple of weeks, go on indoor runs, go on outdoor runs, maybe just casually walk around in them, really like try a bunch of different things in them and then give you my opinion. I'm interested to see if it like changes over time, what I think by the end. And yeah, I hope it's a good running shoe. I feel like you can't really tell even if they're comfortable until you're out on the track and like on mile like eight and see how you feel. But I ordered the Blissfeel Lululemon running shoes the day that they were released March 22nd and they were announced March 8th on International Women's Day because they're supposed to be women first sneakers so Lululemon like makes this argument that most sneaker brands focus on men and then like the women's shoes are an afterthought but Lululemon is focusing on the women first which I think is an interesting idea not sure how successful they were I see a lot of mixed reviews online saying most comfortable shoe ever least comfortable shoe ever so I'm here to add to the chatter so I did a little unboxing on my Instagram Emma underscore cycle where I tried them on and I thought that they were fairly comfortable although it's hard to tell I got a size 9 which is the typical size I get in all athletic sneakers so like Nike Adidas always get size 9 I find that fits me very well and this Lululemon shoe definitely agrees size 9 is the correct size for me and I got them in the pale linen color just because I already have white and black gym sneakers so I thought that this pale linen color was kind of like still a neutral but kind of unique but now I'm realizing that a lot of my workout clothes are dark so it's not that easy to match but that's a me problem I do really like the color of the shoe and I think I have a lot of outfits that I could wear this with like athleisure but for just full-on gym outfits not my best choice and then this is what the shoe looks like. So we have a tongue, which first off I noticed the tongue is very thin and flexible. And I've had running shoes before where the tongue like digs into my heel and actually like cuts me or like leaves a little mark because it was rubbing against my skin. So I'm very happy about the tongue. Um, we do have the Lululemon logo on the side. And I actually think that this is a nice logo placement. And then we have the rest of the shoe some breathable material I feel like I'm not that good at describing shoes and then I like this like little design here the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is this huge logo on the back and I would actually make the argument that Lululemon's photos online are not that good because I could tell that this logo was like this on the all white pair but based on the photos I saw on their website it looked like this was not like silver, it was more of an off-white, so it blended in a little more. I just feel like this is very, very loud. I don't completely hate it, but I think without it, the shoe would be even cuter. But you know, it's okay. And then we have the bottom of the shoe with some grip and then also the logo. I like the logo here. I like it on the tongue. I feel like that could have been enough. This is a little loud. I don't know, what do you guys think? So this is the shoe and today I'm actually going to be doing a treadmill workout class at Equinox. I recently joined and I thought that it would be a good place to like test out the shoe because I feel like treadmills are a little more forgiving than outdoor anyways. So if there's like major problems, then I can come back to the drawing board. And I think in like a 45 minute class, we'll only go maybe like four to five miles. So definitely on the shorter side of runs. So I'm going to go to my workout class and I'll let you know how the first time I'm wearing these hold up. The fit. Does it match? I'd like to tell myself it does.
I just got back from the gym and I will say it is very nice that I can like shower at the gym, look a little bit nicer for my after gym thoughts. But I did really like the Lululemon shoes, at least for shorter runs. I did around four miles on the tread today. It was a mix of walking and running with incline. And I thought that the shoes were very comfortable. I do see a lot of comparisons to these shoes to the Adidas Ultra Boost. And I do have the Ultra Boost. And I find that these shoes have less of a cushion. They're still fairly cushiony, but not like as cushiony as Ultra Boost. I think that Ultra Boosts are almost too cushiony. I really like to wear those to like casually walk around, but I actually get joint pain from running with Ultra Boosts because they like don't offer enough support for me. So I definitely like the amount of cushion these shoes have where they're still very comfortable, but they're not as like squishy as the Ultra Boosts. I will say I do think these shoes are less breathable than the Ultra Boosts. I find that my foot was getting a little bit hot. I am interested to see if it feels different when I'm out side because like inside it's already a little bit stuffy it's nothing too bad but like if you're doing a direct comparison to ultra boost i definitely think that ultra boosts are more breathable and then finally i think that the ultra boosts look a little more sleek on your foot than the lululemon shoes i think lululemon shoes are a little more bulky which is not necessarily a bad thing it like is more about what design you want but i'd say those are like the three big differences i saw but i am excited to give these a test outdoors i'll probably go on an outdoor run sometime this coming week just to kind of like get a better feel and maybe go a little longer to see if i can do some longer runs in these shoes but for today's run so far so good i really do think they're comfortable i don't have any pain i only went four miles though so we'll have to really put them to the test later this week it is now already two weeks later and i've really been putting these shoes to the test mostly indoor treadmill runs but i've also been walking around in them i feel like i can safely say like these are fine to walk around in at least for me they're comfortable enough i could walk all day and they would be fine but i also feel like it's kind of the bottom qualification for a running shoe like if you can't do that obviously you can't run in them but so far walking it gets two thumbs up i think that they're fairly comfortable on the indoor tread, the longest I've gone is around six and a half miles. And I would say usually around like the six mile mark is where I would really start to see problems if the shoe was not going to be for me and I haven't seen them. For me, I typically get like joint pain in the knees if the shoes aren't like comfortable or aren't supported enough for me. And I haven't gotten any joint pain from them. And I also sometimes get bruising on the inside of my foot, like right here but I haven't gotten that at all either. And that's actually very common, at least for all the Adidas shoes I have. I have Solar Glides and Ultra Boosts. And if I run too far in those, like anything over five or six miles, I do get like bruising slash like blistering on the inside. I think the toe cage isn't wide enough. And I haven't gotten that with the Lululemon sneakers, which is very, very awesome. So two thumbs up there. Another thing that I wanted to quickly bring up is I realized there's another logo on the shoe and it's right here i don't even know like what this is called at the toe there is another lululemon symbol and yeah i like that symbol too it's very like discreet like you want to see it but it is there i think it's cute so i thought today to wrap up the video i would go for an outdoor run i don't anticipate there being any issues but you know i figured let's test them out so i'm actually gonna go for an hour run and then a half hour walk so i'm hoping to at least get eight miles in maybe nine miles we'll see i've been trying to get back into running but you know i don't know that's the longest that i've gone in a very long time so i'm going to be doing the 60 minute pop run by bex gentry my fave from november 5th 2021 and then i thought i would try out the 30 minute fitness flipped comparison by bex and tunde from april 5th 2022 as far as i know this is like a podcast that tunde runs that you can walk to so that will be interesting. I haven't taken anything like that before, but I figured that would be like a good end of the run to like get some more mileage in when I'm probably going to be very tired from the pop run. So we'll really put these to the final test and then I'll come back with my final thoughts on these sneakers. But so far, so good. I hope that they hold up in today's run.
I just got back from my run and I did somewhere between eight and nine miles between the running and the walking. It's weird because my Peloton app says I did like a mile and a half less than my Apple Watch, which usually doesn't happen. I'm inclined to believe my Apple Watch more, but I'm not exactly sure. Very odd. But besides that, the actual Peloton content was good. Love the 60 minute run by Bex. I just love Bex. She never misses. And then the 30 minute podcast with Tune Day was kind of interesting. She had Emma Lovewell on as a guest and they talked about comparison. And I feel like Emma had some like nice thoughts to share basically about comparison. I feel like Tune Day was more of like a moderator while Emma was like, more providing the content. I don't know if I'll listen to more of those. If you've listened to them, like let me know what you think or if you have any favorite ones I should check out. It was kind of an interesting idea though. And it's nice that when I go on the walk, like the miles count towards the Peloton goals, because if I listen to a different podcast or audiobook, it like doesn't count towards the Peloton goals, which like really doesn't matter. But you know, it's still nice to have it count in the app. But what you're all here for, the review on the shoes, I was not impressed. I don't think I'm going to get it blisters on the inside of my toes, but I could definitely feel the pinching there. And I think if I ran like 10 to 12 miles, I would get blisters. So I would say they're like a little better than Ultra Boost for me, but they're just not a good solid running shoe that I can go to for longer runs, which is okay. I didn't really think that they would be able to replace my current running shoes. These are my current running shoes. They're car hoops. They are not cute. I probably have talked about this before, but I went to an actual running store after I ran the half marathon because I ran the half marathon in like not good shoes. And I was like, yeah, I want to get fitted. It was super great. I highly, highly recommend if you are interested in running longer distances, like having a good pair of shoes that doesn't hurt or cause any foot pain is such a game changer. And the store I went to was just a local running store, but you like stepped across a mat and they like made this like 3d model of your foot and then they suggested like shoes based off of that so these are like very custom to what my foot is like but they are very very comfortable i have no pain from them they were also i believe around 150 to 160 dollars and then they also recommended insoles for me so they were another 50 but i'd rather pay 200 dollars for this shoe than like 150 for like the lululemon shoe the ultra boost shoe or like brooks or hoka's just like a really popular running shoe when this is like $50 more, but just is so custom to me and fits so well. So I would recommend going to like a local running shoe store if you're really serious about running. Now, if you just want a cute pair of sneakers that you can, you know, do casual runs at the gym with, couple miles, if you want to just have a cute sneaker to walk around in, maybe you're like touring around a city, I think that these are great if you think they're cute and you like them. Like, I have no complaints with them. I'll definitely still wear them to the gym when I do like warm up runs and it's only a couple miles. These definitely do the job. I like them slightly more than Ultra Boost just because I do feel like they're a little bit squishy. But honestly, when I was filming the part where I tried both shoes on for comparison, they're pretty similar to Ultra Boost. So really, I don't think that you need both unless if you like want to get them in different colors. But yeah, I'll definitely continue to wear them. I'm glad I got them. They just aren't going to become like the outdoor running shoe for me. But honestly, you're going to have to try them out for yourself because everybody foot is so different like they might be the perfect running shoe for you who knows so that is my review on the lululemon bliss feel sneakers if you got them definitely let me know your thoughts i would be curious or if you're thinking about getting them let me know what's holding you back i would also be interested to know and if you have any other like good gym shoe recommendations please let me know you know just always need more gym shoes i go to the gym every day and it's kind of fun to like have a bunch of shoes to match it with your outfit so i definitely don't need any more but i'd be open to hearing your suggestions and also let me know if there's like anything else that you want me to review this is kind of like the first review video that i made i feel like and it was cool it was like cool to test out a product over a couple weeks and really get a feel for it and then share it with you guys so yeah that is it for this video i hope you guys are staying safe having an awesome week and i'll see you in my next video bye